The envelope of a sound is the life of the sound over time. So I've got four examples here. The first one here is an electric piano with the note being played and then my finger being held on the key until the note dies away. And if we have a listen to just this one here, we'll hear that. sound where it goes from silence to um, its full volume is called the attack. If we zoom in we can have a look. So right here we have silence and we can see that the attack isn't is, is instant. It goes from zero to full volume and it takes it from 59 milliseconds to 63 milliseconds to reach its max amplitude. That's the loudest part of that sound. If I then zoom out, I can see that that sound has only one other phase. It has the attack at the start and then a very long decay. The decay is just the sound decreasing in amplitude and we can see that that just decreases. Uh, it takes it about 12 seconds to decay. What I've got below is a slightly, it's the same sound, but this time instead of leaving my finger on the key, I have released my finger. And that part of a sound is called the release, where you actually um, bring that sound to a halt. If we can have a look, it starts exactly the same way as before. It goes from silence to full amplitude, and then it decreases slowly, so that's the decay part. Then the release part is right here, where you can see something's happened to make the sound return back to silence quickly. We can work that out by going back to just before the sound comes to a, comes to silence, which is at around 932 milliseconds. So we can use the calculator, 932 milliseconds minus, and then it takes it, oh sorry, wrong way around, 967. It takes it roughly 35 milliseconds for that sound to be released. That's when I choose to release the sound. If we have a look at the next sound, we'll see that it has a different part. It doesn't just have an attack and a decay, but instruments like wind instruments and strings, like violins that use a bow, have a different part. They don't have uh, necessarily a decay, they have a sustained part, because you can keep the note playing and keep it at a, a large amplitude. So if we have a look at the flute, and we have a listen to it. We can hear that the attack isn't as instant as it was with the electric piano. You can actually see that the attack starts around here and the max amplitude is reached by about this point here. So using the calculator, We're at 875 milliseconds, and the sound started at 333. So it took it 542 milliseconds for the sound to reach its max amplitude. There is no decay part of this sound. That means it doesn't gradually come to its own silence. Um, the sound is instead sustained at a full volume, and then finally, the sound must be released when the player stops breathing. And that starts here and ends here. Using the calculator, we can work out exactly how long that releases. The last sound I want to show you is a kick drum, which is a very simple transient. It just has a start. Uh, and an end, an attack and a decay part. There's no sustain. It takes it a while to gradually die away. So here we go, if we zoom in we can see the sound starts here and the attack part of the sound goes from 199 milliseconds to 207 milliseconds 
and then straight from that point there we have the decay part of the sound which comes over to here and then we have some very quiet part of the sound so that's attack, decay, sustain and release <laughs> 